Mm-hmm. Just like six-month-old Thin Mints, this following duo never goes bad. Well, they go bad. Just not bad. Oh, yeah. Horror Vision 2020. Me and Tommy are stoked to bring you the next two. They really need no introduction whatsoever. <laughs> this interview will tell you everything you need to know about them. They are absolutely hilarious. All me and Tommy had to do was tune in and laugh and listen, ask a few questions. We talk everything horror, the movies that scared us, the movies that made us laugh, comedy, horror and comedy, sci-fi, movies so generic that you haven't even heard of them. You gotta check them out if you can even find them. These guys are brilliant. I laughed so hard throughout this interview and I could say so much about both of them, but I want you to tune into the interview and let it speak for itself. They are both stand-up comedians and they are both absolutely hilarious. We talk about dogs, family, kids, etc., etc. We talk about uh, the shows that one of them has created, co-created, worked on, produced, executive producer. So you know what? You know what? Let's just get right to it, okay? Because we have a couple we got to let you listen to. One of them co-created that 70s show and that 80s show and many other things. The other one is a straight-up stand-up comedian that freaking brings tears to my eyes. He is hilarious. He does many other things, and I want you to listen to their stories. So... Let's get to it with Mark Brazil and Johnny Fresno. Come on down. Mm. Oh, delicious. Just like these two. No, oh, I never. Well, it never gets old. <laughs> Johnny. Oh, yeah. yeah that's my... <laughs> I to Tommy's told me something about that. About that's my what? cash cow hat. <laughs> <laughs> this is my mini cow. Yes. Yeah. That <laughs> that's the only cow you love, right? You don't like This is the only cow. <laughs> She's a genetically modified cow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Mark, this is my friend Jim. Jim, this is hey, Mark. Jim. Nice to meet you, sort of. Nice to in nice in this uh, reality. Yes. Yep, the new the new reality with all this crazy shit going on. At least you got your dog. Is that the same dog you talked about in your uh, stand up? Oh, um, yeah, this is a dog. I got two. This is Pickles. <laughs> Pickles. Uh, Pickles loves to eat her ass. <laughs> She's like a millennial or a Gen Z or whatever. You're an ass eater. She talks a lot too. It's really funny. She she talks all the time, huh? Not, unless you want her to. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, she's she's great dog. Um, the other one not so much. The other one. The other one is. Where's yeah. Johnny? No, he's trying to log on. I have a I have a dog that is is not so great, but he's fun to pet. He's a biter yeah. though. Oh really? Yep, I've got a few scars permanent from that fella. Let me Did you hear pants stand? Yeah. yeah, that dog. Uh, I used I had corgis before, and that's their kind of professional calling is to. They don't mean to bite you, but they hurt you. Mm -hmm. so, in the process of hurting you, they're going to bite you, you know? Yeah. I had one uh, Bobo. He's huge. He's a 50-pound dog. And he uh, – I still got, like, a, a dark uh, hole in my thigh where he buried a fang one time. Oh, yeah. you got – you've got – so he's got some <laughs> – yeah, yeah, I read it. I rescued a Chow German Shepherd mix. Oh yeah, with, with some golden retriever, and he had problems before. Oh man, it's bit five people so far. No, that's funny. My brother he had. Still a has them. <laughs> he still has the what? dog. <laughs> you know, my brother.
brother had a chow, and that chow bit me, bit everybody that went to his house. It just bit you until it got yelled at, you know. And then it would still bite you next time you went over. It just bit. It, I don't know what the deal is with chows. They're they're kind of known as the bitiest. Uh, I think dog they're little there. nuts, the inbreeding, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That explains the red states. Yes, <laughs> it does. Well, Chow's, Chow's were in, imperial guard dogs for like the Japanese and Chinese uh, oh. em emperors. I didn't know Don't that. Don't they have a tongue? Yeah, well, this one doesn't because he's too he's too much of a mix, but they well, he's good. a fucking pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, put him, I put them in my room to keep them away from people, and I lose books, CDs, DVDs, you name it. They're all gone. I have to put things in a cupboard. He's a monster. <laughs> I had a Thanks, coronavirus, because I still have him. Yeah, because he was trying to bring him to a shelter. <laughs> you need a crate. No, I got to get him to a military guy. He's military not good. Guy, he's right. a, he needs a solo, solo companionship, not five roommates. I had a... Uh... Rhodesian Ridgeback that was like a shepherd Ridgeback and uh, it had separation anxiety and I went out one day and that dog disassembled my bed and it was <laughs> it was not like a small bed it was not a cheap bed I had got it from Restoration Hardware and it had a big huge board headboard with leather in the middle of it and I I mean he took the whole top of the bed off and it was in pieces and knocked down on the floor in pieces and he's like 90 pounds and I thought he had to work the entire time I was gone to do what he did and I said it was like it looked like the orca after the shark got done with it, yeah. it was unbelievable wow. so from that on I said to everybody at work I go look the dog's coming to work, and that's just the way it's going to go. <laughs> and I'm the boss. <laughs> so yep. that, he lived at the studio. He had a terrible habit, though. He had a habit of, look, I don't, let's not judge, but that dog ate shit. And it was unpleasant. It was downright unpleasant. Like its, his, own, like its own shit? Whoever's. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I've had every dog I had, if you put them around cat shit, they dig into it. I've never had a dog that didn't eat cat poo if it got a shot at it. But this dog, it would it would eat its own crap. And I'm giving it, oh, it's unbelievable. I gave it every kind of mineral. I went to doctors. I was like, dear God, you got to help me, man. <laughs> this dog is eating crap. <laughs> and um, so one day my assistant goes, you want to take the dog for a walk? I go, yeah. So she took the dog out, and then she comes in. She's like, take the dog. <laughs> take the, yeah, take the yeah. dog. Take the dog. I go, what happened? She goes, I thought he had a leaf in his mouth. I go, wasn't a leaf? She goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> so she pulled it out of his mouth, and it was unpleasant. Oh. <laughs> I had to walk the dog myself from then on. Hey. But I love him. They're just, yep. they, they come with their weird things, you know? Yep. This is Johnny. Johnny, this is Jim. Hey, Jim. What's yep. up, brother? Hey. Everybody, call, everybody calls me Julie. Julie, ah, uh, yes, Julie. <laughs> do you need to mark sideways for the editing? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, if you can. Thank you. There we go. I am. Yes. I need my hat in the chat. He, he'll do a whole <laughs> presentation, so we'll get, you know, different information for you guys because he does it on green screen. Oh, okay. okay. To introduce you guys so that we can just jump right in. Well, let me go get in my. I didn't know. I thought it was just audio. Oh. I got it. Uh, so, oh, and Tommy, when you said you sent it to me on text, I couldn't. I couldn't. I tried to <laughs> bring that over to me in email. Oh. I used my computer. Uh, and then I was jump roping. I was, dude, Mark, jump roped uh, 25 minutes, dude. Jump uh, roping? Really? Yeah. And Mark, Mark's been doing. What? Uh, you need 27 minutes that, a day, uh, Miss, Miss Mary Mac. Don't you uh, do that double dutchy style with the girls? Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> He's got little girls, little daughters. <laughs> Miss Mary Mac, 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 all dressed oh, in okay. black. <laughs> <laughs> With silver buttons, buttons, buttons all down her back, back, back. Oh, my okay. God. oh man. It's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, are you bringing us to your serial killer basement? <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm going. <laughs> he spends more time down there, I swear. <laughs> he, he likes to kidnap hobos and dress them up in Star Wars uniforms, make them <laughs> play act. He'll Not kidnap a hobo, and then they'll they'll do Revenge of the Empire nerd or Stormtrooper <laughs> or whatever. No, no, pretty, it's not exciting. Do you let them go? Come do you let them go after? Or what, do you, what do you do with them after? Well, he had to get a dwarf for R two D two. Took forever. <laughs> you mean and, uh, an LP, little person? Come on, we got to be PC here. No, they don't. They like to be called. Uh, what's the word now? Magical. Uh, <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they they they're very they are very magical. <laughs> you guys are killing me. Mark, are I you don't, settled yet, Johnny? I've seen the legend. He literally is going down there in the basement. <laughs> like through a <laughs> labyrinth. Normal, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Normally. A square foot house, bro. <laughs> no, <laughs> normally, I don't get little people for the uh, for R two D two. It's just children. Children, oh, children. Yeah. <laughs> but boy, don't no, they, they're gullible. They really don't take direction well. No, they're <laughs> stupid. <laughs> they really are. Let's be honest. Oh, so I tried going to my little studio, and then the internet uneducated started children. going real bad. Oh, okay. So you're not in the basement anymore unless you have a bed in your basement. I have a bedroom. Uh, this is where all the souls get taken. Then head comes by. So bedroom in the basement. For those times when you say the wrong thing. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> honey. <laughs> honey, honey, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your fucking brains in. <laughs> Give me the bat, sweetheart. Give me the bat. That's a sad thing. My first wife's name was Wendy, and I would play act that all the time. Oh my <laughs> Is that why you're not married with who anymore? Well, I'm not married twice now. Okay. And you know why? Why? Just lucky, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Call it. He's getting good at it. I know. <laughs> yeah, once I got good at it, didn't need to do it no more. That's right. I don't need to do it anymore either. I'm good at it, so I'm done. <laughs> I, changed, I changed my wife's uh, name in my phone to Can You? Because she's always asking for shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Welcome, guys, to Horror Vision 2020. Woo! Thank you. I'm excited. I want to talk about horror and comedy together. That's cool with you guys. That talk is cool. about you guys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I so, <laughs> what is your first favorite horror movie that you guys saw growing up? Um, Valley of Gwang. Uh, well, Mark and I. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you gotta Google that. G Valley of Gwen? Gwang. G W A N G. I dare you to Google it. It might have been Ray Harry. Is it that Stop Motion's Harryhausen one? I know exactly what it is. <laughs> okay, yeah, because, and by the way, that was, I grew up, I feel like the 60s and 70s were the heyday. Because you got Sinbad and, oh, and Harryhausen, you had <laughs> famous monsters of Filmland. Um, Jason and the Aeronauts. Yes. Jason, Jason and the Argonauts. Yeah. yeah. But also you had Hammer Stud. Oh and yeah. I, I remember when I was a little kid, I saw a movie, and to this day I've searched everywhere for this movie, and I just can't seem to find it. And it was uh, Christopher Lee and Brian, or uh, no, Peter Cushing, and. It, I think there was, uh, in the beginning of the film, he had a cadaver in the basement and he's trying yes. to fix it. And then the, the drain pipe that goes out into the garden, all the blood and brains from one of them started gushing out the drain pipe. And I, I think I was like eight or nine and I thought, I wish I was watching Bambi right now. 
<laughs> um, so the hammer, the hammers, yeah, well, the hammer stuff. And by the way, parents didn't even know what they're sending you to back then. You know, they're just like, well, look, it's too stupid for adults. Let let them see that it's a, a blood sucker or whatever. You know, so yeah, there's like I don't even know if there was PG. There was no PG or G or R or whatever. You just had to. It was amazing. They sort of wanted you to think for yourself. So, you know, <laughs> well, back then well, they didn't even wear seat belts. It was crazy. I know. It was, it, was this. it was always this, right? <laughs> Stop. My first, oh, yeah. My, yeah, first, some of the first cars I ever owned were they had no seat belts. I had a Volkswagen from the fifties. I had a Chevy from sixty. No, there are no seat belts. By the way, the thing's huge. You still don't need a seat belt in it. Just you drive, and then when you get no. home. You scrape the Priuses off the front bumper, you're good to go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit, I got Priuses and bugs stuck up under there. <laughs> ah, damn it. And vegans, right? In the Get Prius. some gooby gone, honey. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Johnny? My dad, oh. What was your favorite? Well, I was going to say that Peter Cushing uh, movie that you're talking about, I actually have the Fangoria uh, magazine that has that. He's He's got a, brain, uh, a head cut off and then he's down in a basement with a rag and it's all bloody and he's looking up and I just kept thinking oh my god that is general uh, that's governor Tarkin from Star Wars you and your Star Wars <laughs> but hammer they had the cool like tempera color blood I love that. yeah hammer you know what's weird I'm always I have a problem with blood in a lot of movies because my blood is really dark red you know and i know they wanted to show up on film and everything well it's like this bizarre thing i read in a um cormac mccarthy book about or no it was also in man in like uh, a hannibal lecter book about how in moonlight blood's black yeah you know? it is like black that's why you can use hershey syrup sometimes <laughs> yeah that's really cool that's why if you film everything at night you know yeah. you're done yeah. No, the, the, as long as it's not Blue Knight, I hate that Manhunter Blue Knight crap. <laughs> the, the two scariest so movies I saw was Evil Dead and Exorcist when I was a little kid. Oh, yeah. Those and good. I was over at my friend Timmy's house, and we're sitting there, and then she was like, uh, it, it, it was right where she took the crucifix. She was like, fuck me, fuck me. She was doing that. And I was like, and I was Jehovah's Witness. Wait, what right? was she doing? You were Jehovah's <laughs> Witness? You were Jehovah's Witness? Witness. I, yes, I was Jehovah's Witness. This is really bad for me. And so I'm like going, and then I start, yes. Don't. She hates Satan. Hates him. Gone. <laughs> there was that, and then Evil Dead. Now, I was crying hysterically behind the pillow. Uh, watching these uh, movies. I was so, so scared. Uh, of both I can see the Exorcist, but Evil Dead scared you? Evil Dead, the first one, the tree rapes the girl, it's the demons. Scary, the, yeah. Do you remember, like, back in the day, like, when you would listen to stuff backwards and it meant, like, go kill your parents, like, Judas Priest and stuff? Like, they're playing oh, yeah. that like, what? it's not mid and mid and mid and Perry Como had the same message. Exactly. <laughs> Bing bang a boo kill your mom and dad. Oh, I heard yeah. it. I, by the way, I heard it in Pepsi jingles. I had some problems. I heard it in Jolt Cola. Oh, <laughs> oh man! I heard it on a loop in my head. <laughs> oh, what's your favorite horror comedy? Mine is is Shaun of the Dead. That's my one of my all time favorites. I I love that, but I'm. I'm a little more OG. Tremors is my favorite. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Oh, but by the way, before that, though, I did love American Werewolf in London. Is that a comedy, though? I guess it is kind of. Kind when of. you have a dead guy following you around going, dude, dude. did you kill me? Or yourself? Did you kill yourself? Fabulous. You know, yes, yes. I mean, that to me, I really, that was the first time I'd seen that, yeah. where, where it was like a horror pure horror movie that was sort of funny yeah. like um yeah. the howling intentionally funny let me put it that way i thought planet of the apes was sort of hysterical too mm -hmm. but i don't know if that's <laughs> that kind of it's not really a horror movie 
really you know right so right. kind of yeah we're heading we're heading that way yes so yeah. just my parents Damn, were only 16 years older than me so i watched since i was tiny all of the horror movies so i was corrupted from birth so i well, never that, i didn't have that scared of thing <laughs> the exorcist still terrifies me i really I, I watched the reboot of the exorcist that they did where they digitized it upgraded it they had yeah. a devil appear on the wall and no the that's it yeah, yeah. The, the that Sam Hain thing. Yeah, the Captain Sam Hain looking leaves thing. The room. Yeah, Captain the Captain Howdy. Howdy, right? Captain Howdy. Captain Howdy, which Captain is a Howdy. terrible, you know, I mean, that's. Yeah, Captain like, Howdy's so, evil. Yeah, that's right up there with the clown from It. You know, you take something super evil and go, here comes Candy Puff. Uh, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's our, our friend Eileen Dietz, that's her face. So she was, yeah. yep. she was the body double for the little girl because she's tiny. So, oh wow! She, for Linda yeah. Blair? she signs the, the yeah. pea soup things and stuff. Yeah, she, she put yeah. She was like the creature for Linda Blair when she was possessed. That was I that mean, was her. When she had a, you I'm know. sorry, but when I was little, I I know that that movie's supposed to scare you, and it did. But I, I still had a crush on Linda Blair that was massive. Yeah, and then you see her in the movie Hell Night. You're like, fuck yeah, dude. Let's see. <laughs> Gorgeous. Yeah. Yes, Hell Night. Yep. I <laughs> love that movie, but Regan is really pretty. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, I remember, uh, oh, The Omen also is one of my favorite. Oh, yeah. yeah. Gregory Peck. Horror movies. I love that. <laughs> like when he opens the grave in the cemetery and the mother of the child is a dog. Uh, a jackal. Oh, it's a, a jackal. jackal. Yeah. yeah. Horns. That's awesome. Yeah, I... Exorcist and Omen are still two of the scariest movies I've ever seen. Yeah. And they're so well done. And they stand the test of time. That's right. yeah. But I like yeah. I like the conjuring one too. I like yeah, that one's that was Sinister. You ever seen yeah. that Ethan Hawk? That first one, Sinister, was really well done. Scary. Really Yeah, that was really I wanna, scary. Yeah. I wanna jump back and I wanna put in Blair Witch Project because I saw that in the theater and I never ever saw Gorilla footage like that and we yeah. didn't have the internet and everybody thought that was real. real the ending was so disturbing because there was no monsters or anything like that it was my imagination going i'm never gonna go camping like it was scary dude <laughs> it, it, and then when they're out. in the tent and then the and the thing and there's little kids going ha, 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 and hitting the <laughs> tent that was scary dude yeah and it's like that was, it's so that was it's scary so, it's so weird as being a comedian, you take a joke and then you, for at least for me, I take the joke and then I break it down, and I and that's why I laugh so hard at certain jokes because I think about the person writing it and I think about the situation and I think about all these different things. So my imagination goes fast with it. It's the same thing with horror. I get really into it and wrapped up. And not, and I know Blair Witch is not, you know, most people are like hack, but uh, back in yeah, 1988. And it was yeah, the beginning of all the found footage stuff other than like Cannibal Holocaust, which was a cult show movie, you know. Right. So other oh, than that. I spit was... on your grave. That was Oh, a good that's one. awful. <laughs> Hop. Yeah, but she gets the revenge in the end. <laughs> yeah. Well, they got her it's in the end of the totally, beginning. <laughs> it's a, that is a totally woke feminist film. Yep. <laughs> woke. <laughs> Because she gets to stab them all. Yep. So I, I feel the that's best. Music that's in the beginning. House on the left, you know. Last fight him. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that comedies. I mean, wasn't that Jodie Foster? <coughs> uh, Last House no, on the, the little left. girl oh. who lives down the lane. Oh, that's little girl. Yeah, that's Jodie Foster. Oh yeah. I know the comedy. Martin Sheen. That's right. That's old. That was creepy. <laughs> Believers. Little girl who lives down the lane. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's you guys remember fairy children? Fairy. Huh? You remember children? I remember Children of the Corn Seven, which I thought was the best. Of the I remember series. Village of the Damned. <laughs> yeah. no, children yeah. is where they they rode through the the pink um, smoke, and then uh, the children all became uh, like zombified or whatever, and then they were hugging people, and then their faces got all chewed up looking. It was all. Oh no. no. Like no. Oh, you know what? You know what I love? Is Dennis Quaid in that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of son. 
I don't know why I thought Dennis Quaid was in it. That could be completely wrong. That was oh. Dreamscape. As far as <laughs> com- really, really, stop it. The comedy oh. ones would be like Creep Show Two, House, Army of Darkness. Oh. Army of yeah. Darkness. Yeah. I oh love yeah, House. Army of Darkness was my favorite one. But uh, dude, a movie that scared me that I that really <laughs> creeped me out was uh, Jeepers Creepers. Oh yeah, that, yeah. Was weird. that yeah. one works so well. I yeah. don't know why. The story, I love. The I story agree with that. Behind it. That's why the story behind it was just really simple but really good. Yeah, and you yeah. had no idea what you were fighting. Right. You know, and then yeah. you get into things like The Thing, which is pretty flawless, and Alien, which is, but are, the, are they horror or are they science fiction? Because technically, you know. I think they, I would consider them horror because at my show, yeah. they're like huge, you know, so yeah. I know that. Thriller. He's not, Dennis Quaid's not in this. It's it's uh, uh, Jonathan Freedom. Um, Scott, I'm sorry. Freeman. Oh, we love uh, hmm. They Live, too, which I guess is considered oh, a horror Oh, They Live is awesome. Yeah, that is. That's. Rowdy Piper. Oh, there you <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> <Mark. Yeah. laughs> That's the cover art for it? It's <laughs> awful. It is awful. I'm watching it. What have you guys been doing while you're in quarantine? I've, um, I walk like five or six miles a day. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really awesome considering I was walking zero miles a day before this bullshit. So, but Alea makes me walk. Oh, good, 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 good. <laughs> good for her. What about um, you, Johnny? I'm busy with three three girls, uh, so. Oh, you the man. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter if if we're in quarantine or not. You've just gotta. That's what the jump rope's about. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the orange peeling, big and round. See if you can touch the ground. <laughs> He's doing his own little conjuring uh, play at night. He makes the girls. I know. What's that noise? What's that? Did you hear that? Oh, dude. <laughs> By the way, I will tell you the scariest. I have to tell you the worst. Uh, a really good example of me being a horrible father. And Johnny knows this story. But when my uh, ba- when my girl, my older girl, lived. When she was, she was probably 10 or 11. And I showed her Jaws. I don't know if that's too soon, but Jaws is my favorite movie in the history of the world. I love Jaws. And, you know, and kids are annoying and I have two and they're grown up now and I'm glad. All right, so <laughs> the, the whole movie, we're watching the whole movie and Jaws is perfect as a film because you really care about those three guys, different as they are. You're yep. so invested in them by the time they get on that boat, you're really afraid. And I think that's one of the things that makes it one of the greatest movies of all time. So we're yeah. watching the movie. It's like, does Hooper die? I go, I'm not, you know, it's suspense. I'm not going to tell you, does Brody die? I told you, I'm not going to tell you what happens in the movie. We're going to watch the movie and then it's going to be. That's how you watch movies. That's how movies work. It's suspense. If I tell you the ending, what's the point? Does Quint die? No, Quint doesn't die. No, no, absolutely. Quint lives. I'll tell you that. Because Quint was the third one, and she kept bugging me and bugging me and bugging me. And so That's I'm a bad parent. So when Quint died, oh, you lied to me. Right. So that's two things you learned. Number one. You can't trust adults. And number two, <laughs> you don't know the ending of movies. It ruins it for you. <laughs> but number one is most important, which is you can't trust adults. <laughs> They're liars, especially your teachers. Liars. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but oh my God, the outrage was hysterical. You lied to me. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, Mark, there's a video game called Granny. Um, and it's just, it's this old granny that walks around with a stick and chases you through a house and all these little kids are playing it. And it's, and she says creepy things like, you want to play hide and seek? I'm going to get you. And she, and it's scary what when happened? you die. It's very scary when you die because her face comes up to you real fast and all that stuff. So my kids are obsessed with granny. 
And I try to get him into bed. I try to get him down for a story. I don't want to do that. I want to lay over here. I want to do that. I want to do it. And it's just all this chaos is happening every single night, right? And I'm just laying down. I'm trying to get him to sleep. I'm trying to be real patient. And then I just say, Granny. And they're like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> By the way, that's the other thing I said, because the kid would try to work me going one more story i go no no more stories one more story no because i'd already read like five books i was never chintzy on the books five <laughs> books is a lot yeah, and it's I way know. past the bedtime yeah to and you then, then they're running out of <laughs> they're running out of excuses and then it's like Short wait stories. daddy daddy there's a monster under the bed <laughs> and i go don't be stupid the monsters are in the closet. <laughs> Good night. And you shut the door? Screamed. <laughs> and then the wife was like, what is wrong with you? Ex-wife, whatever. Um, what is wrong with you? I said, I'm funny and I can't help it. But they don't get it. That's on them. They're, they're nine and they're stupid. Let's be honest here. I, I can't help it that they don't get jokes. Right. I hope they get them now. Dude. <laughs> they have... do. They, what, my kid actually said this to me two weeks ago. You're a much better uh, father with adults. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's good. But my father was my father was brutally hysterical with us. Yeah. Like he, well, he was in Korea and he was in the Pacific in World War II. Yeah. And he had three boys and my, we were. We were monsters, you know? And so it's like, I think we ate out of a trough. I'm not sure. But there were three of us. We were Irish triplets. We, there was like seven years between the three of us. We were monsters. We broke shit. By the way, heyday of wrestling. Saturday was wrestling. Yeah. Bobo Brazil, Dominic Danucci, Fireball Martinez. Johnny doesn't know any of these people. Ernie Ladd, Ernie Big Cat Ladd. <laughs> turnbuckle and we would turn the living room we broke a lot of lamps oh yeah. <laughs> your lamps. poor mother your poor oh, mother. my mom was like it was horrible <laughs> i feel bad for my mom this here's a joke though this is a joke from the act which is absolutely true i said mom what happens if you have kids and they're stupid or ugly she goes you do like your father and i did you just love them <laughs> <laughs> where you get your humor from <laughs> yeah, well, they go. both were they were hysterical <laughs> that's hilarious they really were that's awesome so what projects do you guys have coming up things that you can talk about do you want to talk about well, can we talk about anything johnny we're, we're gonna we're gonna do for uh johnny and i are gonna do for cows what jaws did for sharks <laughs> okay yeah i'm gonna help doing that <laughs> <laughs> so are we allowed to talk about it i don't know because you know it's not like a, a go thing and everyone steals everything but you know we feel that our intellect is going to make this too stupid for anyone else to steal this is yeah. correct <laughs> <laughs> i don't think anyone else can think of some of the things you guys are thinking of <laughs> right it's really the, the it's in the details yeah you know um so, so yeah it's it's, it's, it's the kind good. of movie that parents will send their kids to because it's too dumb for adults. <laughs> yes, that's okay. exactly our sweet spot. However, <laughs> we we feel that adults will want to watch it because, you know, yep. Johnny and I talk about, like, Steve Odekirk, loves Steve Odekirk, love the Thumb <laughs> yes. movies. Yep. I love the Thumb movies, and I watch them constantly when my kids were little, yeah. and I was never bored, and I laughed my head off. Yeah. And I thought... He's such a genius. He he hits a sweet spot like Kung Pao. Yeah. Yo, yo. <laughs> Speaking I'm of cows. Ugly, I'm ugly Betty. <laughs> um, that's right. That's right. We want to... Like that me. is weird, though. <laughs> like, but ours is more like... There's much more horror. Like, Kung Pao was uh, a, clearly a takeoff. And ours is really a, a horror movie. Yeah. It's like they live if the cows were socialites. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that's awesome. like when a cow takes over and is more popular than a Kardashian, 
you'll know the fix is in. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Oh my God. So it's, we, we probably, like, realistically, the movie's more sort of tremors than, um, you know, top secret. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there okay. is, there, there got- is a, there's a story behind it. It's not like um, some of the constant gags from the Scream guys. Um, wait, was it Scream? No. The spoof of Scary Movie. Oh, Scary, oh, scary, scary movie. movie. Which, by the way, Scream was called Scary Movie first. Oh. And they changed the name to Scream. Yeah, Scream's way better. <laughs> I think a lot of the guys who write those parodies are In Living Color guys, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the Wayne Brothers. Well, yeah, and I was uh, Buddy, I forget Buddy's name, Buddy Lewis. Um, I think there was like a whole group of guys that came out of In Living Color and wrote all those spoof movies. I I was on In Living Color for one Buddy Buddy Roland Lewis? Yes. Buddy Lewis, you know what's funny is Buddy Lewis, myself, Warren Hutcherson, and John Ridley wrote a sketch comedy show for Russell Simmons called Def Jam Not For Air. And it was not for air. <laughs> they never made it. <laughs> <laughs> not for air, yeah. <laughs> I was like, should we really call the show canceled? Do you think that's a good idea, guys? Is that <laughs> <laughs> So are you, are you working on any television shows or just movies? I am. I'm, um, I do have a, a series that I'm doing right now because speaking of that, omen exorcist thing that it's it's a uh, it's basically a mother daughter in a haunted hospital oh, that's and cool. it but it's it's uh it's it's a dramedy for television but you know like there's this rare thing like supernatural did it uh buffy did it where it's suspenseful and it's scary but it's also there it's sort of funny so there, there is, it's, it's going to be a nice, hopefully a nice mix of that, which Jordan Peele obviously knows how to do really well. Holy moly, he does. <laughs> yeah. I lo- do you know Jordan Peele? I don't. I've never met him. I never worked with him. Uh, but I, I loved Key and Peele. I thought that was a great show. I know. He's still I, doing I, it I, on I say, YouTube. Bitch, that's my favorite one. <laughs> he hides and they're like, I, I tell her, I tell her. <laughs> my favorite by the way i have a endorsement deal with marlboro and every time i say marlboro like idiocracy i get eleven dollars i guess so marlboro. Yeah. Um, yeah perfect there's not enough people need we'll to start that. smoking again exactly you know? thank you thank During you COVID, why to you know decrease the surplus population is that what you're talking about? that's what they all say they say the planet's sinking a couple inches a year because there's yeah. too many people on it i don't know how gravity works but <laughs> no, the, coronavirus, the coronavirus only wiped out 115,000. it's dropping no, the it'll market. be 200,000 by yeah we got we got to get more people smoking yeah yep yeah. <laughs> yeah by the way here's my here's another joke my generation generation x and uh, sort of the boomers we had to smoke for like 30 40 years before we would get cancer and die Kids today, they vape once and die. Yep. I'm, just, I'm worried about this generation. They're pussies. That's all I... I can't just, handle it. Just an opinion. <laughs> when you vape once and die, it's like, well, dinosaurs, Cro-Magnon, whatever. I can't... Darwin. Can't help <laughs> you. There's no more Darwinism. Johnny's got to bring his girls up in it. Yes. Bring right. Them up, bring them up right. Bring them up right. Educate Let them all. <laughs> I'm doing Let them like watch Game of Thrones. A lot of Game doing, of Thrones for those girls. My kids and I, we've been working on how to chop up lines. We're using baking soda appropriately. Uh, well, isn't Fresno the gateway to Stockton? So that's nice. Correct. Yeah. For- so on, you get crank here, and then then you graduate to meth. Ah. I've, you know, I've had the crank here in LA, but also up there in Modesto. So yeah. much fresher at the source. It's like <laughs> it's like it's organic meth. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like getting cheese from Wisconsin. That's all I'm saying. It's very nice. Exactly. I remember when I would go to my dealer's place, he, uh, he had a junkyard where he'd cook everything. And I'm like, wow, is this Pirelli tires? Like, this is good stuff. <laughs> so you can get it still warm, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you want it so Smell fresh and way. warm. 
We're polishing <laughs> brass. I mean, we're doing a lot of stuff. We are busy people. <laughs> <laughs> I started watching Breaking Bad with my my 11 year old son because he loves it. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's good, but you know, at least we can talk I about it. I love that show too. That it's, was a yeah. brilliant show. It's a you really know. good show. I love it. Did, no. did you watch The Great? No. The story, it's like a really sort of very funny version of Catherine the Great. Oh, no, I haven't seen that yet. It's on uh -huh. Hulu. All right. Wait, I think I it's hysterical. And her husband, Peter, is basically Trump. <laughs> but well, I don't dumber. know if I can watch it then. But, um, is that no. even possible? I. I didn't think it was. No, you know what? No, that's an exaggeration. He's not dumber than that. But it's a really funny, it's really funny. You got to watch it for a while. But the first one, I was like, I don't know. And I've learned, even my pilot, my pilot actually was, the pilot for that 70s show was weird to me in the sense that it was, it had a third act, yeah. which pilots are supposed to be open-ended. But technically, you could look at that pilot and I thought, oh, I'll have a really nice short film to send out as my failed pilot because I thought it's not going to go because they smoke weed. Um, but right. he, the girl asks him to take him to the concert. She, he has to steal the car. He takes the car out of town. At the end of it, she kisses him. It's complete. It's like boy meets girl, boy, you know, almost loses girl and boy gets girl. So, but most pilots I found, I, I mean, the, the next episodes are always better because you don't really know what you're doing technically in a pilot, you know, it's that, yeah. you know, I'm backing up right now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> gigantic bottom. Giant. That's why I walk six miles a day. Back, back I have, the bottom. have you ever seen Fantasia, the hippos dancing with a tutu? That's yeah. what my bottom looks like. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably one of the most mem memorable scenes. I, my favorite, hands down. Awesome. Awesome. Yep. Yep. I wish my ass could smoke so my bottom would lose some weight. <laughs> hey, what, what are you talking about here? What are you talking about? Hey, talking about right warm. So, yeah. on, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys watched Assy McGee on Adult Swim? No. Oh, God. I gotta watch it. It's just, a it's yeah, just it an ass with a gun. Yeah. <laughs> That's like all it is. Oh. It's a cop procedural. It's an ass with a gun, and the, the guy who voices it does Sylvester Stallone the whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I don't do well with partners. They die on me. I like your goatee. This is hemorrhoids. Awesome. No. <laughs> That's not even from the show. That's Johnny and I making a better dialogue. <laughs> yeah. I like your bow tie. Those are my testicles. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's a bolo tie. That's sweet. <laughs> it's not a bolo tie. I had some spaghetti for dinner. I don't digest great. <laughs> awesome. No. Oh, this is, this oh, is Thank you McGee. so much for your yeah, time. McGee. Yes. I did, a, I did a, in an acting class, I had a character me and my buddy wrote, which we should turn into a pilot. Uh, this is called Detective Harry Taint. <laughs> and and his partner was Copper Beaver. <laughs> so it, was, it always turned out to be good skits, but I never really did anything with it. But Assy McGee for some reason made me think of that. So I'm gonna go I hear you. That. I had I had a show that I created. <laughs> I was a co-creator of a show for Tom Rhodes, who's like a really great stand-up, and this was in '94, and uh, it was called Mr. Rhodes, which I wouldn't have named it that. I also wouldn't have named that 80s show, that 80s show, but um, so we made this uh, pilot and, and the really uptight teacher on the show, who was played by Ron Glass, who, Barney Miller, who was brilliant and hysterical, and Stephen Tobolowski was the principal from Stephen Tobolowski from Deadwood and from everything, mm -hmm. and that teacher's name was Mr. Felcher. <laughs> In 94, they couldn't Google that. <laughs> there was, you had to actually go to the store to get the Urban Dictionary to find out what that meant. <laughs> what does Felcher mean? Okay, I don't know. I'm not telling you. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you gotta you. go get a, a, a dictionary. Oh my you God, you have to open up your phone and like type in, how are you spelling it? <laughs> this is hard. My brain's gonna explode. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta Google it. 
Speaking, speaking of stand up for both of this is kind of for both of you, I guess. And I and I've watched both of you guys' stand up. You guys are hilarious, but are you, have you guys worked on any new material? You guys plan on doing anything, Johnny or, or Mark? You guys? No, I'm pretty virus. happy with what I've got. So I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fine where it is. It mine's uh, a. <laughs> uh, my yeah, my stuff about Clinton is evergreen. It's uh no. Timer. I uh, I I put a lot of jokes on Facebook, and I actually quit Facebook about nine days ago. Uh, I put a ton of jokes on there because most a lot of jokes are just uh, fresh fish. You know, it's only good today. Like Trump mm-hmm. jokes are going to be gone, God willing, in November. You know, so all the jokes about him, who cares? You know, right. um, but yeah, I write stuff all the time, but it's almost like it's got to really. Uh, lately it's got to really make me happy or laugh to actually write it down. I'm just dying because by the way, my act will be brand new for everybody there because nobody's seen shit in three months. <laughs> That's right. Right. Yeah, so. yeah, it's yeah. both things. Are they going to open clubs up soon? They are. They're already doing that in Vegas. They're socially distanced. I mean, Chappelle did his 846, which was outside uh, with uh, people taking temperatures and they were six feet apart. Um, they were all wearing their masks. A lot of my friends in, in Vegas have been doing shows. Not so many around here. I was talking to a couple of comics, uh, road comics, and they have a big draw. Yeah. So they're not sure if uh, they're going to go um, just yet because the money's got to be there. Right. And they can't sell all the seats. Correct. Right. We've been, I've, been, I've tried to do stand-up on Zoom. I'm, I hate it. Uh, I was tell- I was telling Mark as I would- what Zoom has been doing to comedians is turning us into shitty DJs. <laughs> <laughs> I won't, you know that's the one thing Johnny and I we're making fun of the Instagram famous people famous were, because their brand is so they're like oh my god you guys I got the cutest Crocs and Black Lives Matter. <laughs> <laughs> They're just the, the shallowness of their bullshit. Correct. Oh my God, look at this. It's a three layer cake that I got from Ganucha. Black Lives Matter. It's like <laughs> Hashtag. 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 Hashtag BLM. It's embarrassing. And it, it is. shows how fucking surfacy and stupid and shallow they are. It's like, it's okay. You are, stay on brand. Don't, yeah. don't talk about what's happening. Oh, with those Instagram, nope. with the other Instagram people done, it's like, oh my God. It's, uh, Exactly. They need to stay in their lane over there, what they know and everything, because there there's no content. And I honestly feel like comedians, we look at things completely differently. You know, my act, since you've seen that act, that's an old act that I've seen. That act has gotten into 30 minutes. It's it's gotten bigger and, and the punches. Those were just all new jokes that are being written. But even staying at home and writing these things, the thing that's been kind of crappy uh, is you're not able to really perform it. And then run it past people, yep, which is yeah. which is a, a difficult thing. And then you're like, is it? it you know, Mark's doing different humor than I am. Mine's about my family and stuff like that, and trying to get sober and and all that. But uh, uh, getting together with other comedians, like we've all had that conversation of where, all right, I'm thinking about doing this, 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 and this. What do you think? And then you get you know tags in there and a lot of help, and that supports yeah. that either. There's something about being in person at a shitty pizza parlor where it smells really bad and you're in a crappy green room and you're getting paid 50 bucks and you're like, well, I guess I should work out the new stuff here. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and that's gone right yeah, you now. You got to hear it too. You have to hear yourself say stuff. Correct. I feel like. Yeah. Because, you know, it's to me, and I think I'm sure Johnny is the same way. It's sort of comedy is more like Miles Davis than reciting something. You know, you... Mm-hmm. You hope in the moment something as good or better comes into the premise, you know? Yeah. But I, I won't do the Zoom thing. And I, I just can't. I can't do it. Um, it's I'll do interviews. Because, it's hard because you don't get that response. I've, I've been on a couple with Christine's, and it, they do kind yeah. of fall flat, even if the jokes are funny. It's right. really tough. Yeah, because you've got everybody on mute, and they're doing this. Right. <laughs> right. right. 
<laughs> they, they, they just keep me on so is... I can laugh loud for everyone, you know. <laughs> right, and you, you comedians is at least for me. I feed off of that stuff. That's why, like, when this whole thing happened, I was like, man, I haven't been on stage. I haven't done this. And then everybody's like, well, write some jokes. And it's like, well, then who am I running them past? So I'm glad, like, Mark and I, like, there's, I'm working on this, this idea with mark about the cows and then we're doing uh two cartoons we're, we're looking at as well oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. We johnny has a really no? funny cartoon can we can you talk johnny, about can we talk about it or no probably i don't not. care well johnny's cartoon is is there i'm no not gonna watch this it. anyway oh. all right yes, thank, thank you james okay. thank <laughs> you james now i can say whatever i want yeah um <laughs> so I, I just was about to say something so inappropriate. It would have shocked I was me. I was right there with you, and I was like, do it. I'm jumping. I'm jumping. It's being recorded. Go ahead. It's being recorded. I know. You I know. Go viral, it's going to come up 15 go years later. It's like, Mark Brazil said this about horror movies. I it's was there nothing. that day when he talked about Jeffrey Epstein. All right, he was so, wearing uh, a Frankenstein mask. So the cartoon... <laughs> is about neighbors not getting along because they're from different worlds and different places. And the name of it is Trash Formers. <laughs> <laughs> I like it already. The catchphrase when they, they go from like a toaster into something else is clang, clang, clang. <laughs> no. When the <laughs> He's got to do it. He does when the, it better. It's his idea. When the trash formers, when the trash formers transform, like you remember how they used to go. Yep. Well, these guys go clang clang clang. <laughs> and because they're like shitty. And then they're you like, have a fan going, and they're like, "You gotta get it, fans! You gotta get it! I'm telling you!" Shitty trash, shitty trash American appliances that are, you know, solid. Absolutely. You know, if there was a war, you'd melt them down for bullets. <laughs> but they're real judgmental of the new shit that you buy at Costco for 70 right. bucks. That's going to wind up in the trash, unlike me, <laughs> who is timeless and worth repairing. Right. So, <laughs> I have a Magnavox VCR. I matter. Come on. So that's going to be good. Wait a second. What kind of a what kind of a stereo is there's not even any wood grain on it. You can hold it in your hand, trash. It's trash. So they're they're like uh they're they are uh electronics and cars that are obsolete that turn into robots. And it's the a record, family. The record player's a hipster. Right. Hey Dad. <laughs> Michael perfect. Bay Michael Bay's gonna have something to say about this. <laughs> yeah. He'll and probably got, do us. Yeah, you've got the neighbors that are uh, they're Chinese knockoff products. They're the replicons. 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 Yeah, we don't yeah. say what country they're from, but you you kind of know. You get the idea. Wink, wink. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> awesome. No. Yeah, and anytime you guys do stuff, we can do another interview and we can we can put it out there for all the fans because I have a big fan base for Michigan. So, you know. Oh, cool. Yeah, John, Johnny and I have to hurry and register all this shit before the show comes out. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> don't worry. I don't think Michigan? anyone is ambitious enough to do anything, so we're good. <laughs> we, we're barely ambitious enough to do it. Right. <laughs> How many you guys don't want me to put this have? part in? I'll take it. Yep. <laughs> my, that's, that's what I say. My favorite part of writing is being done. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It is. It is. It's kind of like pulling teeth. But, you know, it's fun yeah. sometimes, but it's, sometimes it's like pulling teeth. <laughs> That's kinky as shit, by the way, Tommy. <laughs> it's fun to pull teeth. Yeah. Is it safe, Tommy? Tommy, is it safe? Oh, my God. I love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Let me gum you. Come on, you girl, poor kid. What was the name of that movie? It was... Uh, Blood Sucking Freak. What? Blood sucking freaks. No, running, not running it. Oh. No, it's Marathon Man. Marathon Man. Marathon Man, yeah. Marathon Man, yeah. Marathon Man. Lawrence Olivier, right? Lawrence Olivier. Lawrence Olivier doing that? Yeah, Olivier and Dustin Hoffman. Yeah. <laughs> Marathon Man, that was awful. But in Blood Sucking Freaks, it pulled out the girl's teeth, too. 
people. You remember we, that? We actually, we just did an interview with uh, Chris Olin Ray and his dad. Uh, that's that did Blood Sucking Freak. Or right. no, 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 no. That was we did an interview with Trauma. With oh, Lloyd, Trauma's Lloyd, the boss, Lloyd, Lloyd Kaufman. Lloyd Kaufman. Yeah, he was the blood sucking freak. Yeah, and I remember the teeth from blood uh, sucking freaks. I don't remember it from the other time, man. I don't know. Yeah, you know what he says to her? What? It's, it's, a, it's an awful movie. The movie's horrible. It's like, uh, uh, you're not gonna, you're not gonna bite my dick, are you? And she's like, uh, no, I promise you, I won't. He goes, yeah, you're not, because you're not gonna have any teeth. And he starts pulling out her teeth. <laughs> Wait, you know what? All right, so I got to go to physical therapy now because I tore my rotator cuff in spring training. But um, one of the scariest things I ever saw was the X Files, where the mother and the hillbilly. Oh boys. my God! That home, home. It's called home. That's the name. That was the scariest. That yeah. was one of the scariest things I ever saw. That's and my it's favorite. Still scary. I watched it again, and it's like, oh my God. Yeah. Was I'm gonna watch. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I gotta go. So this was cool. James, nice to meet yeah. you. Nice Mark, you we'll, register we'll both you those? I'm going to do – I'm on it, Johnny. <laughs> okay, great. Bye, Tommy. Bye-bye, guys. I will talk to you, you later. James, nice meeting you. Bye. Nice meeting you. you. <laughs>